What's going on on my YouTube videos? I'm Jacob and welcome to another installment in my Celebrating Disney series where each week I review and celebrate all things Disney animated or live action regardless of quality under the main Disney banner. And in this week's review I got a live action review and today I'll be talking about the 1994 live action remake and Disney's first live action remake in that matter of an animated cartoon. I'll be reviewing the 1994 version of The Jungle Book. Raised by wild animals since childhood, Mowgli is drawn away from the jungle by the beautiful kitty. But Mowgli must eventually face corrupt Captain Boone, who wants both Kitty's hand and the treasures of Monkey City, a place only Mowgli can find. So The Jungle Book was released in 1994. This version was directed by Steven Summers, who later went on and directed the 1999 version of The Mummy, and also directed over-the-top cheesy action films such as Van Helsing and G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra. The Jungle Book, like I've already mentioned, was Disney's first live-action remake of an animated film, this being a remake of the 1967 animated film one of the most classic films in Disney's history, obviously also being based on the classic Rudyard Kipling stories. And this version is actually often forgotten about. This was released in 94 on the 100th anniversary of when the original novel was released, which I thought was pretty cool. And this movie was decently received at the time. Uh, critics did like it for what it was, although there was criticism that it didn't adapt the story well and it didn't really follow the Jungle Book at all and it just told its own story. And this is a movie that when people talk about Disney's live action remakes, this one tends to get forgotten about. When people think of the live action Jungle Book, they think of the 2016 film that Jon Favreau directed, a film I just recently reviewed on my Celebrating Disney series and a film that I absolutely love. So this version of The Jungle Book, I've had an interesting history with the film. I didn't like it that much as a kid. I think we owned it on DVD. I watched it once. I thought it was boring. I watched it a few years later as a teenager, and I still wasn't that crazy about it. And I ended up selling the DVD. Kind of regretted that, because this movie was hard to find. It's not on Disney+. Plus. I had to rent it on YouTube for a four bucks. That's how I watched The Jungle Book once again. And believe it or not, my third ever time watching The Jungle Book 1994. And I actually do enjoy this film now. It took me three times in three different phases of my life. But I can now safely say that I do enjoy this version of The Jungle Book. Now, addressing the elephant in the room, this is not the most faithful version of the story. I think of Disney's attempts to do a movie that honors, I think, the original source material. I think the John Favreau one did it the best while also adapting elements of the 1967 animated film, which was also a loose adaptation as well. Which is weird to me that people would complain that the 94 version was a loose adaptation when the animated film was a loose adaptation as well, and that scene is a beloved classic. The only thing that these two versions, the animated and the first live action film, have in common, and they're adapting the books, apparently, is the name and the characters, and that's about it. However, I do enjoy this version of the Jungle Book for what it is, even though it does deviate, apparently, from the original source material. I haven't read the books, it's just from what I've read. This is still a really good version. I do really enjoy the direction Steven Summers brought with this version. We actually, Mowgli is a grown adult in this version. He's been raised in the jungle for his whole life and then returns to civilization when he falls in love with the girl that he fell in love with as a kid before being called into the jungle. And the romance angle I thought was pretty good. There's some fun fish out of water elements with Mowgli learning to speak English and be and be a little bit more civilized while also keeping the law of the jungle at the same time. 
I do enjoy the villain in this film, played by Kerry Elways. I thought he was an over-the-top addition to this film. And there are actually some great performances in here. Kerry Elways was a lot of fun as the villain. Sam Neill is also in this film as Kitty's father. And then Jason Scott Lee is the actor who plays Mowgli. And I'd say he stole the show in this. I thought he was awesome as Mowgli. Jason Scott Lee is most known for some of his stunt work. And I thought he did a great job with some of the stunt work in this movie. And I actually did enjoy the on-set chemistry that he had with his co-stars. Especially his animal co-stars as they use real animals in this version. Which I thought was a pretty impressive feat, especially for a movie back in 1994. This movie, while it does lack some of the heart that other versions of the Jungle Book have as other versions had the animals talk. And I think there's a lot more heart when they did it that way in the animated film and also in the John Favreau version had the animals talking as well. This one they didn't and it does lack some heart because of that, I must say. But even though this movie lacks in heart and emotion, what saves it for me is the entertainment value and the escapism. When you got Steven Summers on board who direct these very over-the-top action blockbusters, this is the same guy who later did The Mummy with Brendan Fraser, you know you're just going to get this very entertaining, adventurous, escapist, over-the-top action adventure film in vain of something like the Indiana Jones films. And as someone who's a sucker for movies of this nature... I actually do enjoy the vibe that Steven Summers brought with this film. I did enjoy some of the action set pieces, especially when we get to that third act in Monkey City. I did enjoy some of the stunt work in the film. I enjoyed the adventure and finding this treasure and Mowgli kind of manipulating some of these villainous characters into their own doom, which I thought was actually pretty clever. For a PG-rated Disney film, some of the deaths in this movie, I must say, are honestly pretty brutal. We actually intensely see one character die through quicksand, for instance, and that scene always stuck with me even as a kid, and man, that scene is brutal, and it's rated PG. Yeah, you gotta love it when Disney goes dark. Overall, The Jungle Book, it's not a great movie by any means. I mean, it is kind of cheesy, I guess, in the day's standards, but I do enjoy this for what it is. As a 90s adventure film that has like a lot of influences like some of the Indiana Jones films, even though it's not the best adaptation of The Jungle Book by any means, I still enjoy it for what it is. I think the cast is great. I love the score in this film. The action scenes are a lot of fun. I do love the cast in this film, especially Jason Scott Lee as Mowgli, who does steal the scenery, in my opinion, through some of his stunt work. And I do overall enjoy the vibes that this director brings in making an entertaining action film. The adventure sequences are a lot of fun. I enjoy the beautiful scenery and cinematography, seeing these jungle landscapes. I enjoyed the practical effects in this movie, too, which I do greatly respect. As much as I love the CGI and green screen of John Favreau's The Jungle Book and that being a technical breakthrough, the practical effects in 1994 are just as impressive and I'm just as blown away with a movie with a lot of old school effects along with the movies we're getting today. And all around, even though there's not much emotion in this version, there's a lot of great entertainment value to be had. And I did have a lot of fun revisiting this 94 version of The Jungle Book. And this is the first time I've actually really liked the film, as I've given it negative grades in the past. I was looking back when I last reviewed the film as a teenager on Letterboxd, and I gave the film a 2 out of 5 stars. Well, rewatching it again... And I'm actually giving it a positive grade. I actually did have a fun time revisiting this film. It's definitely the black sheep of the live-action Disney remakes. And I think it deserves a second chance. If you're like me and you thought this film was boring or you maybe you thought this was a lame Indiana Jones knockoff, well, I can't argue that it's an Indiana Jones knockoff because it took influence from the Indiana Jones films. But if you're a fan of movies like this, let's say if you, if you liked... Brendan Fraser's The Mummy, which has the same director, or you enjoy some of the nonsense of some of Steven Summers' other films, if you think like G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra is a guilty pleasure like I do, 
I think you'll have a lot of fun with this version of the Jungle Book. It's criminally underrated, and I do think it deserves a second chance. I'm going to give this version of the Jungle Book a 4 out of 5 stars, and on the 100-point scale, it's getting a 74 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of the Jungle Book 1994 as part of my Celebrating Disney series, where each week I review and celebrate all things Disney, regardless of quality, anime, or their live action under the main Disney banner. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're a fan of Disney like I am, I'll leave a link in the description below for a playlist where you can check out all the other Celebrating Disney reviews I've done on the channel so far, all the animated reviews, all the live action reviews. I've reviewed so many Disney films at this point, and if you're a fan of Disney and would like to catch up on all the reviews I've done over the years, feel free to click that link in the description below to see more and catch up. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified of future Disney reviews. Each week on Celebrating Disney, if you're new to this series, I alternate between animated and live action reviews. My animated reviews are done in chronological order from the theatrical animated classics to the direct-to-video sequels along with Pixar. My live action reviews are freestyle and I leave room for requests. If there's any live action film or franchise you'd like me to tackle in the near future, feel free to leave your requests in the comments down below. Also, if you follow me on Twitter, I occasionally leave up polls where you can help vote and select for future live action reviews of my Celebrating Disney series. Be on the lookout for more polls coming in the near future if you follow me on Twitter. Join me next week in my Celebrating Disney series where I'll be diving into another animated review. I'll be reviewing another theatrical animated classic. And I'll be reviewing the 2000 release and one of my personal favorites growing up. The Emperor's New Groove. I'm excited to revisit this film once again. So be on the lookout for my review of The Emperor's New Groove coming to the channel next week. But if you've seen the 1994 Jungle Book, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!